All right, what's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton and today we are on part six of my series on SQL and data analytics for beginners. Guys, I am super excited today and more than usual. And the reason I'm gonna say that is because we are on our final video for the SQL syntax. That's right guys, within six simple parts, I know some of them were a little bit lengthy, sure, but after six parts of this series, you are going to be considered a beginner in SQL. That's right. So what are the last few things we have to cover? Well, a lot of it is going to be review of what we already know or have at least used. However, I wanna really ingrain that you guys understand what data types, value constraints, and operators you should memorize going forward and using SQL on your own. Um, so let's jump right into it, guys, and let's do a little bit of review and also introduce ourselves to a little bit of new SQL syntax that we probably didn't get to use in our examples that meet into these categories. So first off, it's important to understand the different types of data types. We have string uh, data types, numeric data types, and date and time uh, data types. Now you might already kind of get a feel about what these data types might look like uh, and what might fit into these categories, but we're just going to jump ahead and look at each individual one and see the different types of data types we can get inside of those. So uh, we have string data types. So what are some good examples? Well, you can probably tell right off the bat the first one we have is the text-based data type. And this is a variable length string, meaning really it can have any length it wants and it can be a mixture of letters and numbers. Um, so there's really not much constraints here uh, in this type. So on the next two, we see uh, two types that we haven't used yet, and they're relatively similar to the text one. This is the uh, char or character data type, and then the var char or character varying data type. And uh, basically you can see there's two different uh, ways to type each of them. You can type it either way and uh, PostgreSQL will recognize it. So what differs the two of these? Uh, it's a little bit complicated to explain. However, I will try my best to do it and I will also provide resources that might be able to better explain it. So basically in these case scenarios, I'm gonna focus on the character data type first rather than the character varying. The character data type, uh, let's go through the description. It's where the size, which is what's in parentheses next to it, is the number of characters to store. So we're giving it a fixed length. Now, uh, on the right side, you can see we have as an example a social security number. Now, this is very important for databases, and social security numbers will always have the same amount of numbers in them. In this case, nine. So, in this case, I just put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine as an example. Now, here's the thing about uh, using a character type it's setting a specific amount of, uh, of numbers that it wants in the size. So, in this case, we want nine. However, if you guys go fiddling around in SQL and uh, PGM and, and you make your own table and you try this out uh, and you, you, know, you wanna be a rebel and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna try entering eight. You can actually enter in eight. Now, you guys may be like, well, that's contradicting exactly with what the uh, character size is. We want it to be specific. Um, the thing is SQL is just going to add a blank space there. And if you were to uh, go check the length of that, uh, the column, um, later on and stuff, and you can do that within the SQL syntax, it'll say nine on each and every row of that column because SQL is saying, no, it has to have nine. Oh, you only entered an eight? Okay, we're gonna add a space there. And you can obviously uh, spot it if you're looking at a table, you're like, well, wait a minute, that has eight and every one of them has nine, so you can go back and fix that. Uh, it really is dependent on you though to fix that. So the last one we're gonna look at on the string data type is the varchar or character varying data type. Um, Oh, sorry, you guys can see I have a little bit of a type. I forgot to put an E in the uh, parentheses there. But it's uh, the full word is size, my apologies. And basically, uh, in this case scenario, the varchar is a varying amount of characters uh, in the sense of size. So this can be as, again, it can be uh, text. So alphabet, it's alphanumerical, which is, uh, this is actually a term you guys should know, alphanumerical, which means that in uh, these string data types, you can use the alphabet or you can use numerical values. Um, and in this case, a good example would be full name uh, for the varchar character variant. 
And in this case, the reason why this is useful is because, let's say for example, this is a, um, a somewhere in a table where people are entering their full name. Well, John Smith uh, is a pretty short name and that can fit within the 30 characters. Uh, but let's say we set a, um, uh, we used a character rather than a character varying. If we just set it to what would meet John Smith's name, what if you had a name like uh, Brandon Jackson? Uh, that won't fit in a, uh, whatever amount of characters we need, which in the case of John Smith, including the space, would be 10. Um, you know, the name we listed afterwards wouldn't fit into that. So we have to have a character varying, and we're gonna set 30. So that is the maximum it can go to. So we should be able to fit practically all the full names we can think of unless we have a ridiculously long last name and first name uh, into the 30 character constraint that we've set. So that's the string data types that you guys should know uh, when you're moving forward. And there's a few different types. If you wanna get into the other ones, you're welcome to look up online and I'll provide the resources below. But these are what you're gonna be using well over 90% of the time. Alrighty, so next up we're on to numeric data types. So like I said, I wanna focus on the majority of what you're gonna be using. There's different types, but this is what you'll probably be using around 80 to 90% of the time. Uh, first off, we have the int or integer. Um, now you guys remember using this. This is pretty much what we use if we're gonna enter in any numeric value. So for example, in our unit sold, we used the uh, integer to record the fact that we sold 30,000 units for any given order. Um, and then next up we have the bool or boolean. Now this is something we should have used for our true and false, but we didn't simply because of convenience sake um, and uh, not being able to have, uh, being able to have a null value um, early in one of our examples. So bool or boolean uh, basically states that we have a true or false value, meaning that the, uh, for example, in our status received, uh, uh, status received column, uh, it's either has it been sent off or has it, uh, has it not been sent off um, or has it been rejected uh, in the um, sense of it being uh, received. So this is uh, it's as simple as a true or false. And also you can type it in a variety of ways. I know for example, you can type it as in T or F and you know, of course that stands for true or false. Uh, and there's a few different ways you can type it too, which like I said, I'm gonna link the resource below where you can look into it and type it. But really, I mean, you really can't get any simpler than T and F or you know, just a four letter word of true and then false being five letters. So next up, we're gonna look at money. So this is uh, probably more professional to use if you're doing something related to currency value. So for example, for our total sales, if we were listing the revenue that those sales generated, we would probably use a money value. Um, so, or a money uh, data type. So, anyways, those are, like I said, about 80 to 90% of what you guys are gonna be using uh, when you're making tables and um, doing stuff at a beginner's level. Next up, we have the date, time, data types. And again, I wanted to give you guys what uh, were kind of the simple ones that you'd be using the majority of the time. However, there are other date and time data types that you guys can go learn. Uh, these are pretty self-explanatory. It's just knowing the structure of them. So if you have a specific date you want to uh, record as, as a timestamp, um, or as a, sorry, as a, um, a date in a date, uh, any kind of given table, you have to have the structure of uh, a year, the months, and the day. So this, for example, uh, when we're recording this video is on July 17th of 2017, and we write it out in the year first, the month, and then the date. Next up, we have a time, pretty self-explanatory. You have to have the hours, the months, or sorry, the, the months, the hours, the minutes, and the seconds. So for example, uh, around the time we're recording this video, um, uh, I probably started somewhere around 12.30 um, with 32 seconds in that minute. So, and then we have the full timestamp. Now this is something that you'll probably see most commonly because uh, when a day is being recorded, you wanna get the date and you also wanna get the time of that date. So you have the year, the month, the day, and then you have the hour, the minute, the seconds, and then what's really important is the time zone. Uh, and that is an important variable that I think a lot of people sometimes forget. They're like, well, you know, I've entered in my, you know, my year, my month, and my day, and the time inside, why isn't it working? You gotta have the time zone in there, at least in PostgreSQL. So, moving on, let's go from uh, away from our data types. We've finished uh, the different types of data types that you guys have to learn, and also the categories. And we're gonna focus on value constraints. 
Now, uh, we've talked about value constraints. We've used most of these, uh, but there's probably going to be one that you guys haven't heard of. And that's the one at the bottom, which is foreign key. We'll get to that in a second. So, of course, null. Uh, this means that it can contain repeating values and it can be left blank. Uh, so, for example, uh, we have a date here. Uh, let's say it's an optional date, meaning uh, it can be left blank or not. You know, we don't really need the date. It's kind of an optional thing, but it's good to have. Uh, it can repeat. Uh, it could be a repeating value, so we can have multiple uh, columns with that same. Uh, uh, sorry, multiple rows in the same given column with the uh, same value of that date. So not null, of course, means it can't be left blank, but it can be repeating. So we might have multiple customers who are named John Smith, or we might just record the first name and multiple customers with the name John. Um, and then we go into the unique, which means it can have uh, not have repeating values. However, it can be left blank. So for example, let's say we're asking for an optional email. Uh, we need a unique email. We do not want repeating emails. We don't want people creating multiple accounts on our social media page with um, the same email. We need to have that as unique. However, it, cannot, it can be left blank in this sense because we're just uh, asking for an email that's optional. And then we have primary key. Now you guys remember this, this is usually utilized with an ID because it can't contain repeating values and it cannot be left blank. It is a very important thing to use if you're trying to get an identification number or something to ID a special uh, kind of asset or value. So next up we have the foreign key. Now what is a foreign key? We never used foreign keys throughout the tutorial. Um, and I definitely wouldn't say it's something that's advanced. It's something that you should probably understand as a beginner. But basically, it's utilizing a primary key from another table. So I have an example written out here. Let's say, for example, we need to get um, an ID from another table. Well, we can reference a customer underscore list, which is the table that ID number is in, and then we can specify we want the ID. Uh, to explain this a little bit better, guys, I'm gonna link resources below, much like I have with the previous things, uh, that really kind of help engrave this idea, because I want you guys to get uh, the use of a foreign key. Uh, it can be very useful uh, when you're trying to connect information between two tables. All right, so next up, we're gonna be talking about the operators. Uh, now, there's, like I said, tons of operators, but these are what you're going to be using 90% of the time, especially at a beginner's level. And, uh, you know, we use a lot of these. Uh, however, a lot of them that we didn't use are pretty self-explanatory. So we have the less than sign, the greater than sign, the equal to, the less than or equal to, and the greater than or equal to. And then the example, uh, we use this a lot during our unit sold uh, scenarios. So where we have the where clause and then we set the operator and then we, you know, set our rules in. Uh, and then next up we have the and, or, or not. So uh, we know how to use the and and the or. The not works very much the same where you could say uh, where um, unit sold, uh, where unit sold uh, is not equal to uh, 1000. So you could throw that in there as well. Um, and then we have we have addition, uh, subtraction, multiplication, division, and then um, we have two ones that I haven't mentioned yet. The uh, parentheses sign is going to give you, um, I'm trying to think of the term right now. I'll put it in an annotation right now. I'm just kind of blanking on it. But basically what it does is it divides whatever value is in there and it's going to give you the remainder from that division. So if you divide, um, let's say uh, uh, 10 by uh, 5, you're going to get uh, 0 because it divides into it perfectly. However, if you divide 12 by 5, you'll get 2 because that's what your remainder is left over. 5 can go into 10 two times, but if we're doing 12, uh, you're going to have a remainder of 2. Uh, and then just as an example, I threw 2 times 7, which is you know a perfect example of utilizing the operator in the sense of multiplication. Alrighty guys, well, I wanna say congratulations. If you made it this far, you stuck through it. I know uh, not everything in here has been perfect. Not everything has been easy. However, you definitely have a comprehension of the basics if you've gotten to this point, guys. I really wanna say congratulations. And I'm so proud if you've really made it here because it's not, uh, it's not always easy for everyone. Uh, SQL, as much as it is a simpler language compared to a lot of other um, computer uh, coding and programming languages, uh, it is still something to be proud of. 
uh, and it's not something that just anyone can pick up. So congratulations, guys. Uh, and uh, we are going to do two more things related to uh, PG Admin in the sense of importing databases and exporting databases. That's what's going to make up the next two parts. And then after that, we are done with SQL completely uh, and use, utilizing PG Admin, and you guys are free to use it as you please. And then we're gonna move on to data analytics. So guys, I can't wait to get started and showing you guys how to do that, uh, and then also move on to data analytics. So anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Stay tuned.